Can you tell us about uh, I Am the Walrus, Noah Prime, book one, which is coming here uh, April of 23? I Am the Walrus is the first book in the uh, the Noah files, which is what the series is being called. Uh, co-written by me and Eric Elfman. Eric and I wrote the Accelerati trilogy, which is Tesla's Attic, Edison's Alley, and Hawking's Hallway, which are Oh, three of my favorites. I love working with Eric. He is so much fun to work with. Basically, you know, we're just having fun. We, 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 and, and you know, we, we make each other laugh and then we come up with a book. Uh, you know, he's, he's my best friend and it's just really fun writing with him. Uh, and this new one is about this kid who, who, when he gets stressed out, starts taking on all of the attributes of different animals, you know, all of the uh, defense mechanisms. So it's like he's cornered by bullies in the hallway. Suddenly he finds himself keeling over, you know, like, like a possum, which freaks the bullies out and they run away, which is exactly the, you know, the point of it. And he doesn't know why he, this is happening to him. Uh, you know, he, he gets startled and suddenly he sprays like a skunk and fills the room with this, you know, this terrible, you know, funk. Uh, what he ultimately finds out is that he has the DNA of every creature on earth, that he is a human arc that has the, that they can create, rec recreate every creature from him. But then he comes to realize, he and his friends come to realize, you don't make an arc unless something really, really bad is about to happen. And so he has to try to figure out what's going on and why he was created and has all this. At the same time, trying to deal with all of these unexpected responses that he has. So it's also a little bit of a metaphor of the changes you go through as you go through adolescence uh, and, and sort of taken to extremes. And it's told in a humorous style like the Accelerati trilogy, sort of, uh, sort of a little bit of a, you know, uh, a Douglas Adams kind of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy kind of sense of humor, which which you know we both love, and there, it's it's always wonderful when someone reviews our our books and say you know it's like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but with you know, you know with animals, you know it's 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 kind of fun. I love the idea that if you started spraying like a skunk, most people would be immediately repelled, but there would be someone. Humans are so wonderfully varied who had never found you attractive before, but now. <laughs> well, see, there's <laughs> interested. <laughs> there's a, there's the girl who uh, who has a, has first at first she really doesn't like him but the more weird things that have he does the more situations she finds herself in with him the more she is curiously interested in him there's you know there's this one moment where they're stuck together in an industrial freezer and he starts developing blubber that just swells like a walrus. And it keeps them both warm until someone finally lets them out of the freezer the next day. And she just finds as, as horrified as she is by that, she's just really interested in him now. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, I wanted to, uh, to ask you earlier when you were talking about uh, writing a humor column and coming upon people reading it who had no idea who you were. Uh, now, of course, um, uh, you're you're a bit more uh, prominent. You've got 50 books out in the world. Have you ever come across somebody reading something by you, either then or now or whatever? And that was your that was your line. Like, hey, you know, I wrote that. Well, the conversation has started. Perhaps you find me a little bit more interesting than you would have before. Uh, there are times when, and it's, it, it doesn't happen all that often because, like, most of the time, people are reading on like Kindles now. So it's like trying to, you know, if if, if I'm ever on vacation and like there's a whole lot of people reading books. I'll always walk around and just see if I can see if there's anybody reading one of my books. And every once in a while they are. But I always have to be careful because usually it's a teenager. And I don't, and you know, I don't want to go up to somebody and just start a conversation and say, hey, I wrote that book you're reading, because that's just a little bit creepy. And so uh, I'm always very careful. That's sometimes I'm in I'm in a bookstore and I see well, people with, with the book, and then I'll go up to the to the bookseller and say, you know, you might want to tell them that. The author is here and can sign it for them. Oh, that's a smart way to get them to be approached by somebody else. Yeah, so that, that's, that's kind of, uh, it's and it's fun when that happens. That's a good safety tip, authors. Follow follow yeah. that. <laughs> so my, 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 my approach is going to result in, I was about to leave you a one-star review, but now that you're here, I'll just tell you. <laughs> 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 good backfire, terribly. Good. <laughs>